Uh, okay, we're there we in go. harmony. Uh, Mamie, my mo, moo, ma, 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 ma. <laughs> we bring you. Here we go. Dork Matters presents a special holiday presentation. The 12 Dorks of Trekmas, written and performed by Lexi Hunt and Ben Rankle. On the, On the 12th, 12th day, day of Trekmas, a real dork sent to me. me. Twelve ensigns red shirting, eleven Picard's face palming, ten D Boimler Mariner Rutherford, nine trills a daxing, eight maids of milk, seven Rikers monologuing, six Kirks a laying, five gold press latinum. Four birds of prey, three Romulans, two cats named Spot, and a crystalline entity. Merry Christmas, everyone, from Dork Matters. Do you want to know what my secret is? What is your secret? Ketamine. <laughs> Oh, we have to talk about the ketamine. I was wondering if we were going to get to talk about your ketamine treatment today. How is it going? It's been great. I have three doses so far. Wow. And how it's changed my brain is so insane and fascinating. Like you do the whole like psychedelic trip. Wow. You have an experience, but it makes you feel as if you're having good mental health days more often than not. Okay. Wild. Yeah. And it just, it just like you can use the tools that you've been taught effectively, whereas before it would be like this invisible barrier to using them. It's like now you can actually use them. Mm -hmm. So like therapy style tools, like coping mechanisms, that sort of thing? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's fascinating. Um, I'm very interested because like, I'm sure we've mentioned this a little bit before, but I have an anxiety disorder and my Mm -hmm. first medication I tried, thankfully, was like, oh, oh yeah, my brain wasn't working properly and suddenly I am normal again. Like I don't, yeah. I don't know what happened or when I slid or when I stopped realizing that I wasn't my usual self. But yeah, like it was like a light switch. So is that sort of a similar sort of experience for you then? Yes. Yes. And I got labeled treatment resistant last year. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> so I've tried like everything. Not that it's funny. For some reason, the label of treatment resistant is is hilarious for a human being. It is funny. I want a t-shirt. This is treatment resistant. I owe you a t-shirt too, speaking of t-shirts. I have not gotten around to sending your gold shirt, but it is here behind me in my studio. Oh, oh, I thought we were talking about Lexi's t-shirt. Oh, Jeremy Hotz. Yeah, No, Jeremy we still Hotz. don't have that either. Oh, it doesn't exist. Even though somebody did write it back and be like, we've sent it now. Oh. It's not real. I don't believe that Jeremy Hotz is real. This is like Snuffleupagus. <laughs> they just took your money and ran. Only three of us know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> well, so Snuffy's real though. But is he? Like he started out as a possible figment of Big Bird's imagination and only Big Bird talked to him. But then suddenly, like after a set number of episodes or a few seasons, everyone started talking to Snuffy. Do you know why they did that? Because they wanted kids to be able to uh, trust when they told people that they believed them about things like abuse at home, etc. They were worried about creating a stigma where because Big Bird is sort of the toddler stand in where these kids would be like, oh, people don't believe him. He's telling them that Snuffy's real and nobody believes him. And he is real and we all know it, but why would you tell him it anyway? Yeah. Yeah. As someone who has seen two episodes of Sesame Street, this sounds wild. Sesame Street raised me. I mean, yeah, like, Sesame Street in hindsight really was kind of wild. Mm-hmm. It was, I mean, my first crush is probably Sesame Street. <laughs> which which one? Uh, Maria. Uh, which one's Maria? Yeah. I don't know how to describe her. She has dark hair and she was like... Is, one, she, is she a person? Yeah, she's a human being. Sorry, not a Muppet. <laughs> yeah, she was, oh, she was one oh, of the okay. humans. Okay. Yeah, not a Muppet. <laughs> okay, I wasn't that, sure. No, you're right. That was absolutely necessary to clarify. Yeah, like, <laughs> she was one of like the three ladies on the show. Oh. Yeah, yeah. She was played by uh, Sonia Manzano and she was on there for like ever. Yeah, she was probably like the one of the longest, if not the longest reigning 
cast member. Oh, yeah, go back and uh, check out some of her very early sort of like outfits and like just style and like oof. 80s man. Yeah, oof. it was. Uh, she was. She was a crush before Ben knew what a crush was. She had like the the perfect 80s hair too. Like it just was yeah. so full bodied. Amazing. Wow, she had great now hair. Now I'm just gonna spend the next five minutes looking up pictures of my Sesame Street crush. Yep. Just let's leave Ben <laughs> so he can revisit Maria. 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 You remind me of a Sesame Street story. Though her pictures with the puppets are terrifying. I'm not going to lie. Gee, right? Amazing. I mean, anything with... <laughs> I forgot you're our anti-puppet. I'm not anti but I just think they're nightmare-inducing. Yes, Can they, I put this picture in the chat? Let's see. Absolutely. Please do. We need to see whatever chat picture is the most terrifying to you. Click on this image and tell me that her eyes don't scream. Get me out of here. Help me. Oh, yeah. No, that's later, Maria. She's a little more like mom maria at that point yeah i mean she can still get it but i mean still but her eyes are just like she looks yeah terrified yeah i mean it's elmo elmo (laughs) is from a generation beyond myself like (laughs) elmo came along much later in the sesame street experience he's like really "Mm, yeah he's not one of the ogs he's not no no when did elmo launch to google Was it like 93, I want to say? 2005. No. What? He's that new? No, that can't be right. No, that can't be right. No, 1980. What the fuck did Bing? You suck. Why did I use Bing? Well, you're using Bing. I mean. That's your mistake. It is my mistake. All right. I got a a scary one for you. I'm popping it in the chat. Maria got married with one of the puppets at her wedding. Oh, that's. To one of the puppets at her wedding? No, Maria married another human character on Sesame Street. Like the character of Maria. Oh, not in real life. In life? No. No. So she married, like, not a puppet character either, a human character on Sesame Street. But, like, you know, the puppets were there because it's Sesame Street. <gasps> Who is the creepy elephant? Okay, so this <gasps> picture that you sent of... Uh, Thank you. There it is. Yes, Steph. Did you just experience Snuffleupagus? Oh, I hate him. My favorite Muppet? Yes. Yes, she did. He's not a Muppet. That is a monstrosity. So he's supposed to be an elephant, but he doesn't have any ears. Yeah. He's missing ears his eyes are terrifying oh yeah those lashes those are lashes yeah yeah but these yeah. are like eyelashes yeah yeah i th- i think he's fuzzy and cute yeah. personally i don't think so <laughs> that's okay i can Ugh. i can objectively see how to somebody who did not grow up with his character he is terrifying oh so maria did what was his name lewis they didn't get married lewis yeah. so maria and lewis in my head yeah they were married in real life. Oh, yeah. No, because, like, you know, Sesame Street was real life to us. It was. Yeah. No, absolutely not married in real life. <laughs> yeah. He's, like, wow. I think, like, 20 years or senior as well. So that would be a little strange. Okay. So Big Bird going to the wedding wasn't as weird. Uh, I mean. Acting. Okay. Now I Jazz know hands. what nightmares I will have tonight. Should we hit the theme song? <laughs> Don't think about them anymore. We'll wash this yeah. out of your mind with some extra ketamine there and some go. Star Trek. Yeah. Is that good? I don't actually have yeah. ketamine. Nobody email me about <laughs> that. I don't deal drugs anymore. Welcome back to the show. This is Dork Matters, a dorky podcast for dorks. I'm your dad, dork host, Ben Rankle. With me, as always, Lexi Hunt, your edorkator. And with us uh, more and more usually is uh, Stephanie Girk, your star dork. Star Trek dork? Trek dork? Yeah, dork trek. Dork trek. <laughs> we came up with whore dork for uh, Laura O'Connor. Uh, Lexi <laughs> came up with that. We have to blame her. Yeah, that didn't I don't feel good about that one. I'm sorry, Laura, wherever you may be right now. I'm sorry. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) We're trying to give everyone dork titles for when they uh, join us on the show. So you can can workshop that. I'll be space dork. Space dork? Space dork. Perfect. Our space dork, uh, Stephanie Gerg. Thank you for joining us, Steph. Thank you so much for having me again. 
I mean, when we decided we were going to switch it up and not do what we had planned for Christmas and try to do a Star Trek Christmas episode, I mean, it was immediate. We were both like, we can't do a, yeah. a Star Trek episode without at least asking Stephanie if she's available. <laughs> yeah, I immediately cleared my calendar. It was very full. It's funny because I just assume your calendar is about as full as mine. Yeah, definitely as full as yours. What are you doing Saturday at 8.30? <laughs> While we're going to be in our closets and, and studio spaces recording. Uh, <laughs> Basement offices. <laughs> yeah. Or closets, you know. Talking about Star Trek crossed with Christmas. Yeah. That's what we're here to talk about. We're going to talk about Christmas. I have uh, tentatively titled this episode Holla Dork the Halls. Which is great. Oh. Yes, yeah, so applause please. I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. That's the appropriate amount of applause. Um, yeah, I'd say Star Trek isn't really the sort of thing that most people conflate with sort of a Christmas, like because there aren't any official like holiday no, episodes because, no. you know, you would have to be hard pressed to find somebody that actually celebrates Christmas in space. And that's what I, I love. Do you think that in the future, when we're in the world of Star Trek, let's go TNG just for fun. Yeah. Is there such thing as Christmas anymore? No. Absolutely. It no. still exists on Earth, for sure. Oh, we have a difference of opinion here. Oh. I mean, it canonically exists. It's referenced. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those holidays that may still exist in certain parts of Earth, but is just more of a like, oh, Earth used to, like North America, we used to really celebrate Christmas. It was this big thing there. Now, now no one else does it anymore. And that explains why there's no Star Trek Christmas episodes. Mm. Makes sense. I'm with you on that. Because, like, I just always assumed that Starfleet is still, like, it's still an organization. Mm -hmm. So at some point, like, if there was still Christmas, there'd be, like, the shitty Christmas tree set up by, like, the receptionist desk mm -hmm. at, like, Starfleet Academy. <laughs> where would they put that on the, where would they put that on, on the deck? Where's the offices of the enterprise like where's the receptionist being like "Ooh, captain's busy right now but pop a seat listen to some well, music i mean his office is straight off of the bridge but still yeah so they would have to go through the teleporters yeah. so that it would that would technically be reception you're right the, they would be reception there for christmas everybody gets neelix <laughs> with a uh, like two mixed with a christmas tree <laughs> and everybody gets to live as like a tree and for like a week no i think that would be very very christmasy yeah it would be exceedingly if you cannot like <laughs> breathe without smelling pine saw it's very christmasy it's not christmas without pine mm -hmm. saw did you decide stephanie i saw a poll on your instagram are you gonna do uh, a christmas tree or not <laughs> i decided yes but only because um, the only Christmas decorations I own are all Starfleet ships. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Right. Like, how are you not the perfect person for this, right? Like, it just makes sense. Oh and I should have God. known. Can we get a picture? I, I don't own tinsel. I don't even own Christmas lights. Yeah. It's just uh, Star Trek ornaments. Yeah. You know what you need to do, though, is you need to get light. Okay. Okay. Stay with me. We've got some DIY. What we could do, you get some little LED lights, some cotton, some tinsel, and then you could put them right behind the like engines, oh. so it looked like they were having like warp, like like space and like light, and it would be cool. Well, that's actually a good idea, right? And then you wouldn't it wouldn't be Christmassy. Yeah. It would be more like in line with like Star Trek, making it nice. Yeah. I just wrote yeah. a note in the shared document that I realized I probably shouldn't have written there because now you'll see what could have been a great surprise. Uh, uh, Buy Christmas <laughs> ornaments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Send staff Star Trek Christmas ornament with her shirt. I mean, Aww. Hallmark has made the most insane Star Trek Christmas ornaments. I don't know if you've seen them, but they're not Amazing. just the ships. There's one where uh, Spock is dying behind the glass. No. And it's just Kirk on the no. other side. They're doing the hand touch. No. And then you press the button. Oh, my God. And it, gives the, and it does the little speech. Is this our our episode art. Just talking about Star Trek Christmas shit. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> Why oh would God. they make that? Because Spock died for us. Is Spock Jesus? Yeah. Spock is as close as we get to Jesus. Spock is you know Jesus. What? So the whole premise of this episode is we're going to be like, there is no Christmas special, but what sort of, you know, episodes have uh, elicited sort of a Christmassy feel, right? And I think we can do movies too. And if we're talking about the true meaning of Christmas, mm. it's Spock giving his life for the rest of us. Wow. And rose again three <gasps> days later. Did he actually? It on the Genesis days? planet. God. No, not three days. No. literally? No, not really. Wow. Stop three days. I don't know what the time span is between those two films. We could say three days. 
It's pretty close. It's, three days. it's close enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, his needs of the many outweighed the needs of his few. I will say some of the decor also has, like, if you have lights, you can plug in the ships yeah. into the lights and, like, press oh, buttons and nice. they do make sounds and, like, warp noses and, and battle stuff. What yeah. is great about this is I was actually already putting a uh, Riker theme <laughs> gift to, together for Lexi. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit more Christmas Star Trek shopping, and this is how we're going to say thank you for being on this episode. <laughs> I, I work with a just woman Riker. who has multiple Christmas trees in her house. Like, they have oh. false ones for, like, all the different rooms. And so, and not that her house is ginormous, but, like, one for the living room, one for the basement where – TV and then one for their bedroom. This makes me kind of want to have two Christmas trees, like one that have like mm-hmm, the ball mm-hmm. ornaments, but then one that's just like all Star Trek. All I guess Star what Trek. I take exception with is that you're suggesting that the Star Trek ornaments aren't classy, Lex. No, yeah. no, 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 no. that they need to be hidden in the yeah. basement tree. No, I don't want anyone to not see them. Oh, okay. like I want them to have their own tree because. So you're gonna put the traditional one down in the so, basement. Yeah, why not take the balls, <laughs> paint the balls, pretend as mm-hmm. if they were planets. Mm-hmm. And then put the Star Trek ones on there. But that needs to be on its own tree because I want everyone to pay attention to that, not the other then one. Then why have the other tree at all? Because I do have some really pretty ornaments that I quite like, and they're, like, all black and gothy. I'm not a true Star Trek like, fan because I wouldn't do this Just hang all. them from the ceiling. I mean, yeah. What would you do, Ben? I would not um, put Star Trek things on my tree. Boo. I need my tree to suit a particular uh, aesthetic that I enjoy. What's your as- Christmas what, aesthetic? What? Yeah. It's sort of like a mm. cabiny retro Christmas. You know, I like things that are gold and green and red and like I need it to be like sort of like cute ornaments that aren't overly fancy looking. Some tinsel, some nice warm lights. You can do that with Star Trek I like too. A, a traditional Christmas. Yeah. I'm also one of those people that won't wear like superhero shirts either. Oh, okay. You know, you What are you wearing right now? Oh, this is from an artist, Rebecca Kirkby. Oh, okay. Uh so it is a muscly woman uh with gigantic bosoms and it says big milk (laughs) if you haven't checked out sorry rebecca kirby's uh art is fantastic you would both be super into it she is immensely cool but don't you dare think he's ever going to be wearing a spider-man t-shirt i'm not knocking people that do this stuff it's just not my my vibe overall i like all this shit i don't have a problem with people doing it what about in your studio because it would match your studio's aesthetic my studio is uh, like You've seen it. It's in yeah. incredibly uncool. So that's how I express my uncoolness is here on my walls. I mean, so put the nerdy Star Trek tree in there. Absolutely. I could do that. <laughs> yeah. We need to have a contest where people send us pictures of their uncool Star Trek trees. <laughs> Mine's going to win. Yeah. I don't know if you can win yes. if you're part yes, of you the uh, contest running group. <laughs> but you also might be the only person that enters. Yeah. I'll, I'll put it under a pseudo name. Yeah. It'll it'll be, um, it'll be like Gephany Sturk. Yeah, Gephany Sturk. You'll never the know. The dorkiest <laughs> trees ever. It'll be the only Christmas tree without you lights. You can send us a picture and it's like you with a mustache and like, oh. Oh, even nice. better if it's like one of those 2010 yeah. finger <laughs> mustache <laughs> tattoos. What I was trying to say like 20 minutes ago was that I think we can count Spock dying as a very Christmassy moment. <laughs> Giving your life for others is, uh, you know, the most the most Jesus moment that you could have in Star Trek. I guess so. I never would have thought about that. Let me wow you guys for a second Please with do. some knowledge that I'm currently Googling really fast. I thought, I'm like, Wrath of Khan came out around Christmas time. I want to say that, but I'm totally yeah. wrong. It was a summer oh. movie. Oh. Didn't Generations come out around Christmas? So this is the thing. Generations is absolutely on my list of being sort yeah. of a Christmassy film because Picard has that whole fever dream in the Nexus where he is having Christmas with his imaginary family. Well, and don't they like find warp technology on New Year's? Uh, yeah, it's in the Christmas season because Zephram Cock has like all the Christmas lights up. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. It's in the Christmassy season because they're all like partying when it happens. Yeah, but this is like earth uh, that's going through world war three and they're having a hard time this is north america earth still like we haven't actually gone to the point where they've become starfleet so i don't think christmas exists once Mm. unification Mm. comes well with that in mind let's talk about some episodes that have the essence of christmas the spirit of christmas this is a good spot for some jingle bells jess But in a Star Trek theme. Yeah, how do you do Star Trek? So like beeps. Oh, like beeps. Like jingle bells, yeah. but like beeping. 
Yeah. Like when Data does that like talking thing with in generations. Life from like forms. the just searching for some life forms. Data, you might want to turn off your emotion chip. That's a great. I think that might be my favorite Star Trek generation. It's good. Yeah, it's a great one. I think it's great. It's a good one. Humor. I think Journey Home is still my favorite. <gasps> yeah. Voyage Home? How can you go wrong with Space Whales? Oh, Voyage Home. And the uh, Voyage Home. Did you I call it Journey yeah. Home? Journey yeah. to the center of the Voyage Home Earth. <laughs> I can't remember anything ever. I'm going to start us off here. Let's kick this ball okay. into the field or whatever sports expression. Jingle ball. Ball into yeah, the I field? Know. I don't do sports. Sports. Yeah. Sports. Sprots. Um, I'm going with Deep Space Nine, episode 525. So season five, no! episode two. Was it one of yours too? Yes. <laughs> well, we can daily double this. It's okay. Let's let's okay. just take team. We can work on all of these like this. Who cares? We don't need to have our own individual ones. Let's just start with yeah. this one and let's chat about it. Do you remember, yeah. Lexi, in the cards? Do I remember in the cards? Uh, it's the name of the episode. <laughs> oh, it has to do with sports. <laughs> oh, is this the baseball one? No, that's uh, uh, Take Me Out to the Holodeck. Sorry, there we go. Yeah, that was on one of my other lists of, of best. This is Jake and Nog get into trouble while trying to cheer up Cisco by acquiring a mint condition 1951 Willie Mays rookie baseball card. Oh. The Dominion offers to sign a non-aggression pact with Bajor. That quote comes from Memory Alpha. It does. <laughs> Are you also on Memory <laughs> Alpha? I live there. The Wikipedia bio for this episode was not as good. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, so throughout this episode, yeah, they go through all these like crazy adventures and do tasks for people. It's essentially one side quest after another to try to trade their way through the top to get this baseball card for Cisco. It's hilarious. Kind of, I like that type of like, I'm going to trade you this button for that zipper and I'm going to change that zipper for that shoe. I like those types of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically half of TikTok. Is it? It's like a challenge thing where they try to trade like a paperclip for like the coolest or most expensive thing they can get oh uh, okay yeah right. paperclip for a like, house people used to do that in my neighborhood on halloween I don't like, like they'd see what like the coolest thing that they could trade oh and then they go back and have parties and like compare because teams would go out around the neighborhood and do that if a team comes up to me on halloween a, a team i'm gonna run not away. a teen i know what you said i know i think both yeah both. like both either <laughs> Both. Just run away from both. <laughs> uh, either a teen or a team. Or a team of teens. Basically, it was what that was. But anyway, a gang of youths. Ooh. That's called a gang. That's called a gang. Yeah. If you live That's in my city, gang. Yeah. Then ganging it up real Gosh. hard for Black Friday. Bunch of kids shooting each other. Stabbing. Stabbing also. each other. This is what happens. Um, yeah, this episode. So basically, the sort of Christmassy nature of it is the gift exchanging but also the sort of making people happy through the gift exchanges. The sort of button on the episode is that after Jake and Nog finally get the card that they're looking for, you get sort of this cap on the episode where they look back and, you know, their little trade game has uh, inadvertently made everybody else like brighter, happier, uh, in spite of the looming war that is basically sort of oppressing the entire station at that point. Okay. So it's sort of a Christmas miracle slash gift of the Magi type thing. Not really gift of the Magi, but, you know, there's gifts involved. It's similar. It feels Christmassy. It does. It, it's just that, like, the gift-giving component and just, like, how everyone feels better and also, like, capitalism. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the great quote. It's my money, Jake. If you want to bid at the auction, use your own money. I'm human. I don't have any money. It's not my fault your species decided to abandon currency-based economics in favor of some philosophy of self-enhancement. Hey, watch it. There's nothing wrong with our philosophy. We work to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. What does that mean exactly? It means... It means we don't need money. Well, if you don't need money, then you certainly don't need mine. (laughs) Good jokes. Money jokes. Put that in your stocking. <laughs> yeah, the B plot is interesting too because it's a Kai Win B plot, and it's actually sort of like an interesting. It's one of her least grading sort of like Kai Win is amazing as a antagonist because she is not necessarily villainous, but she is definitely antagonistic. And in this episode, she's basically being forced to decide between like siding with Star Trek or siding Starfleet. The, yeah, um, Star Trek, Starfleet, or siding with the Dominion. <laughs> Alpha Quadrant or the Dominion. Yeah. And, uh, you know, 
that's that's a pretty fun premise and uh, she gets some good advice about delaying her need to answer so that was my first d episode that's a good episode i think feel christmassy oh 100 percent. i vote yes did that put your phaser to i don't know stun on the yule log (laughs) of star trek christmas This is going to be the worst series of uh, illusions that I make in any episode ever. It's going to be tricky. It's tricky. Uh, uh, it's tricky. No? Okay. <laughs> Does anybody else want to bring up an episode so I can stop talking? Yeah, I, I got an episode. Um, this episode is called the Hallmark episode of Voyager, which is why it feels very Christmassy to me. Um, it's 1159. It's season five, episode 22 of Voyager, where Catherine Janeway discovers the truth about one of her famed ancestors, Shannon O'Donnell, realizing who Shannon was, differs vastly from what Janeway has believed all her life. So it's one of those episodes where Catherine Janeway plays an ancestor version oh. of herself. And it's set around like it's it's very like it's winter time. It's in a small American town. It mm-hmm. feels like Christmas. The only difference is Christmas is not like mentioned mm. or around in that time. Wherever you find love, it feels like Christmas. That should have been for last episode. We did mm. Muppet yeah. Christmas last episode. Um, this is on my <laughs> list as well. Because we probably went to the same internet uh-huh. sources to uh, get a head start on this. I think so. Which is perfect. Lex, you can just jump in and join in with us. Um, I like this because for some reason it's a Neelix-centric episode. Uh, like on the surface, he's the instigator for it. And for yeah. why, like, why is Neelix interested in Janeway's ancestors? But he is. <laughs> Conveniently. Because he's a creeper. He's a creeper. That's all I got. We've had this discussion before. I like Neelix more now than I did initially. Uh and I certainly like him more in the latter half of like Voyager, especially around this time than in the. Oh, early. absolutely! He do, he does get better. I'm not. I, I won't argue with you about no, Neelix I mean, getting better. What's what's shit? Is he yeah. still a good person or character? No. Maybe not until the end when he finally does something sort of selfless by and leaves Voyager. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> helping everyone else by no longer being there. Yes. <laughs> Because he's essentially supposed to be their spokesperson throughout this entire quadrant. Yeah, he was supposed to be their ambassador. Yeah. Yeah, but he just ends up being their chef. And he is arguably the worst ambassador because once they leave that area of space that Neelix is in, he's no longer relevant because they're in uncharted territory that Neelix doesn't even know. So why do they keep touting him as their ambassador? It's like, we have only one visible alien besides Tuvok, so it has to be you because we don't want to be very, like, human-y. Well, let's not do any Balana Taurus erasure. Well, yeah. I mean, they pretty much do. (laughs) They do. It's like they forget she's (laughs) a half Klingon until, like, it's relevant to the plot. Yeah, it basically is a throwaway, isn't it? Oh, Seven of Nine joins us because, you know, ratings. Um, (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Who's the guy that plays uh, the, like, love interest? He is, like, this really like well-known character actor but he's also like like there's no way that uh what's her face would would ever like janeway would ever go in for this dude not even like her fake ancestor he's a dud he's your that's why it's like a hallmark movie because like on the on the surface when you look at him you're like how would any of janeway's ancestors ever kevin ty go for it yeah and he's just yeah huh born john kevin fishburne Wikipedia can take you to some interesting places. Yeah, I don't know. I would never marry this man. His first wife died to get away <laughs> from him. Uh, oh God! Wait in the in the show or in the show? Sorry, in the I was show. Like, because I'm like looking at the actual actor Kevin Ty's bio, and it's like divorced, <laughs> <laughs> and her name was Mary Lou Seaman. So oh, that wow. joke just writes itself. Wow, he's not known for being a good father. The the oh. that. He sorry, the actor, the actor plays okay. roles where he's not a good father. No, no, he's generally just a a shitty dude in like yeah. all of his roles. So that might be coloring sort of our feelings about him. I think so because in that in that era, like the the nineties two thousands, ever since all his roles were the same, and then they brought him in as like, oh, this is Janeway's ancestors, and he's a douche. And she falls in love with him. And you're yeah. like, how? This this is why it's a Hallmark episode. It's contrived. It's very yeah. contrived. 
Um, yeah, but this is Christmassy, like you said, because it all takes place sort of in winter. Um, <laughs> and like the final sort of scene of the movie or <laughs> the episode shows up at, uh, mm-hmm. I think it's New Year's Eve. She has to get him to like leave his shop, which is like not the usual sort of message that you get from this kind of like David versus Goliath, small business versus large business sort of thing. Basically, he needs to move so they can build a giant space mall type thing. But he's the last holdout. <laughs> and he owns a bookstore, which is like arguably the best place in a, to go to in a small town. Because that those characters always have the secrets. Yeah, now it's gone. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so he has he to be talked mail. into leaving. Um, and apparently, for some reason, Janeway's ancestor takes on that job of talking some guy into but, closing his shop. And, and and the Millennium Gate goes on to become some very important oh. historical site in Starfleet history. Yeah, it's a weird sort of premise, but New Year's Eve. So it's yeah. Christmas season. <laughs> the real message of Christmas, right? Capitalism gets the end. The end. <laughs> the malls win. The malls win, which is, I think, the real yeah. <laughs> uh, meaning of Christmas. <laughs> yeah, don't support your local bookstore at Christmas. Let the malls win. Yeah, go to your big box store instead. <laughs> uh, let's take our break. Let's go to halftime, as we call it on this show. Touchdown. This is going to be a great episode to sit around the fireplace on Christmas Day and just listen to. It's a classic. Like a a modern day elf. (laughs) I have zero Christmas plans, so I probably will end up doing this. So don't make fun of me. (laughs) Love it. No, no making fun of. I I would generally choose to be on my own on Christmas if I could. (laughs) Um, That's not true. I basically never did that. One time my family didn't invite me over for Christmas and I cried. Oh, (laughs) Hey, who's that Pokemon? It's Sad da, Ben. Na, 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 na. It's Sad Ben. <laughs> that's like, Aww. that's a unnecessary. What do they call that? Superfluous word. Ben is just sad, sad by ben. default. Oh, sad. Okay. Let me describe to you oh. a silhouette. So it sort of starts like this, sort of a circly shape. And okay. then below it is a little bit more of a circly shape. Is it the Enterprise? Moo, good, <gasps> but which one, oh, sassy pants? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so then it comes off of the secondary sort of oval. There's sort of a line that goes up, and then another long sort of ovoid object that is mirrored sort of on the other side. And then down on the lower oval, there's an inner oval. <laughs> I don't know if you can actually differentiate between... Enterprise D? It is the Enterprise D stuff. <laughs> good job, Steph. It's Enterprise D. Yay! This is this dope ass print that that. Was that what you were trying to describe? Very nice. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What? Do you mean I didn't do a good job? No. (laughs) I don't think I've done a good job yet ever. You know, I just think uh, the Enterprise D had more ovals because of that saucer. So I was just like, Mm -hmm. this is the only one that makes sense. Yeah. Overall, than like the OG. Ooh, those are some nice prints. Yeah, they come from this uh, really cool artist. What's his name? (laughs) Adolf. Actually, he's called like Famous Adolf on Instagram okay. or something like that, which I guess you're not the most famous Adolf. Second most famous Adolf. Yeah, but they're limited edition like screen prints that he does. Mm-hmm. Like That's cool. Limited run, I mean. So yeah, like, this, this is, is like, nice. You can't see it, but it says nine for 50. Those look Christmassy um, to me. They do. <laughs> yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah. A little mistletoe on that. Look at you. Absolutely. Done. Um, space is basically like a just a big wall of twinkly lights already. It is. Da na 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 It's Enterprise D. <laughs> I forgot to end that. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Got to got to blow the candle out. Otherwise, we let the, the ghosts in. What do I get for winning? Um, all the things that I've already promised. Okay, because this is the first one I won. <laughs> I've lost all the other really? ones. Oh no! Yeah, I because didn't the other ones that. I tried to oh. cheat. So I think you <laughs> I like broke me out. <laughs> you were googling while we were talking about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. No, I mean this one was always yours to win. I would okay. have been surprised if you didn't if you didn't nail that one down. Well, the first one I specifically remember the first one because you did um uh you did the doctor's hair. Beverly's hair. Mm. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> the flip. The <laughs> Which flip. I could would it's never beautiful. have guessed in a million years. Now I have to tell you, I've started following a new person on Instagram, and she is obsessed with Dr. Beverly mm. Crusher. And she has a sleeve of all Beverly Crusher tattoos, oh. and they're beautiful. Like just from different artists? Uh, I don't know if they're from different artists. That's a good question. But Gates McFadden has recently started commenting, like, how mm-hmm. like gorgeous mm-hmm. and kind it is. And so it's just like it's a Star Trek meme account. But every so often, the curator of this account shows her 
gorgeous Star Trek tattoos, and I think they're just so wonderful. That's amazing. I will find her and link her in the show notes. Yes, please. I forget which tattoo I was in getting, um, but at the same time, somebody was getting the Enterprise D on their uh, leg, and I was very, very jealous. You're like, I want what that one. I scratch this. Yeah. I mean, that. that's honestly how it goes. Like, neck tattoo I want, it's because they posted a picture of somebody else getting the one I wanted. And I was like, that's, I want to copy everyone else's cool tattoos. Yeah, I get that. Let's go to the next episode. Lexi, you're on the spot. What's yours? The child. The child is the from. Well, I mean, there's so many connotations. It is from Next Generation, which, as you know, I've stunted myself and I basically just live like it's constantly the next generation. Where Deanna Troy has an unexpected oh. pregnancy. Oh, yes, this one. You know what? I love this for how this ends up being Christmassy. Uh, we get a. Uh, a, what is it called? Immaculate Conception or whatever? Immaculate yeah. Conception with Deanna Troy, who's kind of known for dating a lot of people. So is it so immaculate? I don't know. I mean, she only dates Riker and Worf. Who else is she known uh, for dating? No, she also mm. dates, like, thank you, Steph. Like, okay. she, like, at yeah. a time, there's, like, some type of diplomat. Deanna's up there. She's the Lorelai Gilmore of the Enterprise. She <laughs> is the Lorelai Gilmore of space. But I like her more. Yeah. Okay, but no one beats her mom. Oh no, no Luxana one Troy beats is... her mom. Luxana Troy is like the queen of dating and marriage. Love multiple it. people. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the performance from uh what's her name? Marjorie yes. Barrett. Yes, yeah, uh, she's so and, good. And Renee Aubergine in that episode of Deep Space Nine, where they have to like sort of let down their their guards or their masks with each other in that elevator, that turbo lift, sorry, that gets stuck. Yeah. And she like takes off her wig and oh, lets yes. him like that was great. Un- undo his form. And it's just this like wildly emotional moment, like gravitas and like, mm-hmm. like just feeling above what you would have expected from like what had been up until that point, just a silly slapstick, you know, like Deanna's mom episode. And it's just like, it just comes falling down and like, there's just so much pathos in it. It's beautiful. Since we're talking about her. It is beautiful. And then they make a joke about her swimming through Odo's fluids. Oh, yeah. That's not so good. Oh, God. I don't remember that. (laughs) (laughs) That's right at the end when he's like, oh, yeah. Like, I have to go into a bucket every night because I, like, break down into a fluid. And she's like, I can swim. Jesus. (laughs) Maybe it's because I was younger when I saw it and it just didn't make sense. That's, like, the most, like, to me, like, that's a witty hit, like, hit on somebody to be like, oh, I can swim in you anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Good for you. It was fantastic. She's, like, she's the queen. Like, she's one of those characters that are so over the top, but you also can't help but love every time she shows up because she brings out the best Mm -hmm. in everyone. And somehow, like, her over-the-topness does not feel unnatural or unreal when she's there. It's almost like that that crazy aunt that everyone knows that just shows up um, in your life at Christmas mm-hmm. time to do something completely insane. Yeah. It's another connection. Aunt Mim from The Biggest, Most Beautiful Christmas Tree in the World, my favorite golden book. <gasps> yes, mm-hmm. you talked about that. They have a Luxana Troy character in that. <laughs> Aren't we all? She's very Christmassy. We could almost put that episode up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyhow, Deanna, Deanna gets knocked up by a uh, space god or something. Some sort of – she she gets pregnant and gives birth to Jesus. She gets pregnant. Space Jesus. And, well, wouldn't that be great if she gave birth to Spock and it was like we've come full circle. We have a lot of space Jesus. That's the plural of space Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> space space Jesus. Jesus. Ice type Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, but Spock is the only one that uh, wears the Space Jesus outfit. That is true. He does wear the Space Jesus outfit. He really does go hard on Space Jesus, especially in Voyage Home. Yeah, especially in Search for Spock, like right at the end when mm-hmm. he's just wearing the robes and you're like, oh. Well, and he's wearing that the entire time through like Voyage Home as well. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't have his yep. memories back in Voyage Home, so he's just sort of like a weird otherworldly. Does, does he wash feet? He's just talking to animals, talking to people, bestowing yeah. gifts on them. Sign of washing the lepers and the whales and the he does wash, he does a, whale. wash a whale Ish. <laughs> baptizes <laughs> a whale. some whales yeah <laughs> see this is i'm glad we're doing this episode we're finding out just how star trek uh christmasy star trek really is so do you think in hindsight like knowing like people that were like uber christian not allowed to watch certain tv shows in hindsight should they have been allowed to watch star trek they were. Were they? Was yeah, it a we big were. Christian thing? You've got, you've got Steph and I here, and we were allowed to watch this Star This is Trek. why I'm, I'm yep. asking, because, uh, like, 
The only thing I wasn't allowed to watch was The Simpsons because they said hell. I was not allowed, like, Star Wars was sort of not cool because the yeah. Force was trying to replace God. Okay. Yeah. Like, you can do all things through the Force. And my mom would be like, no, that's Jesus' job. Yeah. You do all things through Jesus Christ, our <laughs> Lord and Savior. But the thing is, there were, like, church, like, conversations or magazines would always point to, like, oh, what are very, like, religious Jesus-type moments in shows and movies? And Star Trek would always win because they'd tick off all the boxes uh-huh. of some things that were, like, Christian-type behavior uh, or things that would be, like, oh, yeah. Like, pedagogy. Yeah. Like, things that you were supposed to do as a Christian yeah. but, you know, maybe don't end up in uh, actuality yeah. in practice. So, like, search for uh, – sorry, the Wrath of Khan is, like, typical because it's like, oh, yeah, Spock laid down his life for everyone else. You know who also laid down his life for everyone else? Jeebus. Jeebus. Oh, my God. I've been in this Sunday <laughs> yes. school class. You know what? I might have gone to Sunday school class. if it was, like, watching Star Trek episodes. If you knew there were some – you had to have yeah. a good teacher if they were going to make, uh, like, uh, analogies towards Star Trek. Yeah, that was my dad every time we went Star yeah, Trek. I remember a couple of those. It was it was yeah. loud, but we always got the sermon. Oh. Like, shut up. Kirk is talking right now. <laughs> my dad would be like, did you know Hulk Hogan's a Christian? <laughs> <laughs> so you were okay to watch wrestling. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That was literally – that's all it took. If somebody were a cross, I could watch it. Yeah. Yeah, Lord of the Rings was allowed because Tolkien became a Christian later on in life. Mm. That's how it works. That's absolutely why I was allowed to. Uh, C.S. Yep. Lewis, mm-hmm. same thing. Narnia was okay because it's a – Okay, but Narnia was one big yeah. Jesus, God, everything. I mean, Narnia is very, like, directly, yeah, religious. Messianic, as I say, if you use real words. And I know I've said this – before but that very last story in the narnia series is mind-blowing with the unicorn which one's the last one no the one where they realize the whole family's dead oh yeah yes except for oh susan. right right because they except for susan because susan turned yeah, away because time and moves wasn't differently. part of the family or the fold anymore and so when they all got hit in the bus accident at the train station or whatever the hell it was, it was train, the train train accident. Train, accident. Yeah. They all die. then they all go to heaven with Aslan, except for Susan, who's still walking around London, all heathen-y. And a part of me was like, so she... She wore makeup. She wore makeup and probably smoked How cigarettes. But a part of me in reading that, I was like, so she yeah. got out safe. Like Loose morals and loose liquor. She's still alive. You guys yeah, are she was dead. Fine. What's, like, who's winning what here? Saying here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you probably took the right message from I that. I didn't. But then when I reread it like a few years ago, I was just like... What the hell? I I didn't catch that when I was younger. So this begs the question then. Amazing. Are we what defines Christmassy? Something that is magic based mm. or more something that alludes to the religious portion of Christmas? Cuz Christmas is like very like in in well, a lot of places of Europe like New Year's Eve is the big holiday. Christmas is very much a consumerist North American holiday. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's right there, Christ Mass. I mean, and yeah. you have to think about the combination of sort of uh, solstice celebrations, mm-hmm. um, paganistic solstice celebrations, Christianity, and then whatever came after that. There's more stuff that has sort of co-opted the idea of Christmas. Commercialism, I guess. Which explains why Starfleet's like, no thank you, no Christmas here. Yeah, a post-scarcity society would not have the most uh, interest in sort of like a gift-giving or commercialized uh, holiday. Yeah. Um, it's got to be like Star Wars. They have like Life Day or something. Yeah. Or oh, they have Captain's Day or Picard Day. <laughs> Is that their <laughs> the version Day. of Christmas? <laughs> yeah. So I think if we're talking Except about... Except only the Enterprise D has that one. Yeah. Uh, what did they have on uh, on the Cerritos? <laughs> Captain's Day? Was that it? Was it Captain's Day? They have a version of Picard's Day, but it's something else. Oh, well. We can't remember these things. No, we, we got to look this up now. I'm intrigued. Captain's Day. Lexi, to Google. To Google. On Google. On Yahoo. On Bing. On Bing. <laughs> and Ask Jeeves. <laughs> on Webcrawler. And oh, I miss Jeeves. Netscape. And he's still there. You can oh, find he is? Him. He's not he gone? A, yeah, he's still around. Oh. He's a bit racist Ooh. now. He's gotten a lot older. I'll pass. Oh. I mean, he's a, w- a white dude. June 16th is Picard oh. Day. <laughs> is it June 16th? It's apparently Captain Picard Day. What's Federation Day? Ooh. Oh, yeah. That was a that was in season three of Picard. Mm. That wasn't a very happy mm. oh, from you, Lexi. Like, I'm, I'm just upset that of all the, ep- like, of all the Star Treks, Lower Decks doesn't have, like, a very specific 
I, I thought of all the Star Treks, they would have like a Halloween episode to start, like a Christmas episode or something. But with that specific like Picard day where they where they have the statue of Picard and they put lights on him and and worship at his feet or something like something funny. No, that's O'Brien. Yeah, I guess. You're they right. worship at the feet of O'Brien. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> that's where you're getting this confused. Oh, but also right. again, like all these holidays we are thinking about are very North American. And it's like, this is the point that, like, Earth has unified. Yeah. We're in the future. Consumerism doesn't exist. We don't have money, really, even. Mm. That said, Starfleet is still stationed in San Francisco, so it could get in there. It could sneak in. It it could, but I think it'd be – because but your ship is full of, like, people and aliens from different cultures and worlds. All it takes is one lobby (sighs) Starbucks, like, down on the main floor of the Starfleet headquarters, and you just have one lobby. This is what I'm saying. There would be a Starbucks, there'd be a fake Christmas tree slash Picard statue. Anyone's going to do it. It's going to be Quark. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, 100%. <laughs> because he'll see Christmas as like... As a money-making oh, opportunity. Wanna, as a, Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And Absolutely. wouldn't that be great? So maybe we'll see that. Like a Black Friday shopping day to prepare for Picard Day with Quark. Yeah. Like I think that would be so good. Um Boxing Day sales, like it would just be I hilarious. Feel like a little bit bad. We got super distracted and Sorry. sidetracked away from your your pick there, uh, Lex, which was that uh, mm-hmm. one where Deanna Troy gets knocked up with the son of Space God. I feel like that sums it up more yeah, than anything. Yeah, you know what? There's and, not really a lot yeah. else to say about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to move on to another one for us yep. uh, that I wanted to get into because it is probably my first pick for like as Christmassy as it gets, and that's Tapestry. Which one? It's the 15th Tapestry. episode of the sixth season of the American sci-fi uh, science fiction television series Star Trek: The Next Generation. Let me give you this little uh, this little rundown. Picard basically uh, gets injured; his heart doesn't work. Uh, Q pops up and is like. If you had your real heart still, which you lost in that fight, that Nausicaan bar fight, you would be fine. And so he goes back in time and Picard's all like, well, I'd do things differently if I had another chance. And so he does. He oh. he stops himself from getting stabbed and like changes the course of his <gasps> history. Yes. Turns out he ends up being like a junior science officer on the Enterprise. He's no longer captain because he doesn't have that zeal for He wears that beautiful teal yeah. color blue yeah. shirt. And the reason right? this is yes. Christmassy. Gorgeous. Is because this is basically a wonderful life. Yes. He wonderful yes. life's himself. You're right. It's a good one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. He uh, he has his little Clarence moment with Q <laughs> where he wishes he Clarence wasn't born. Clarence. And... I love that. Yeah, Q is Clarence. Every time you hear a bell Ooh. ring, Q, a Q is born. <laughs> a Q is born. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, God, nobody watches that movie anymore. No. It's a wonderful no, life don't. is too long. Like, do you ever think about it? Like, everyone remembers the part where he, like, has, like, the stock market crash and then, like, thinks about killing himself and, like, did he? But nobody remembers that it starts way before that with, like, his childhood, his, like, courting days in high school, talking about his early life working at, like, the candy shop. It's not one of my favorite really movies, I'm not going to lie. When Christmas comes around, the last thing I want to watch is a movie about a guy who wants to throw himself <laughs> into the river. Is <laughs> sending the wrong message. A stock market yeah. crash, a huge yeah. economic downturn, a bunch of homeless people that don't have any place to live. Yeah, like it's so yeah. so enlightening and fun. Like, a guy yeah. who wishes himself out of the out of the existence of his family. Like, yeah, it's not super fun. No. Yeah. Anyhow, I just think the parallels here uh, are very uh, Christmas related. If you think of it in mm-hmm. the context of it's a wonderful life. At the end, he realizes that. Changing the past would change who he is and, you know, what he became and that the world needs him just like Jimmy Stewart learned mm-hmm. in It's a Wonderful Life. So, Good good choice. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. That is a good choice I never even considered. Considering mm-hmm. most of the episodes I picked were not TNG. No. I tried to do one from each. So I wanted to do a TNG, yeah. a, a Voy, and a, a DS9 to hit oh. the 90s trifecta, you know, the Holy Trinity what Very are you nice. going to pick for the original series? Uh, I don't really have one for TOS. I thought about oh. it. Okay. But I stopped at three because I didn't want to monopolize the time. I thought Lexi would just have a whole yeah. bunch of stuff she wanted to talk about. <laughs> drank too much last <laughs> night. Lexi uh, looked today, drank too much last night, and looked on her phone two hours ago. There's nothing wrong with that. Any kind of prep is good prep. This is a podcast. <laughs> A multi-award-nominated yeah, podcast. Multi-award-nominated. Yes. Also, congratulations on your nomination. Thank you. Thank Very you. Much. 
At this point in time, I I'll we'll hear if you're a winner or not by the time this airs. I have no idea when they actually talk about the winners okay. or not, but yeah, I've decided that that's not my uh, framework for success. Uh-uh. Getting nominated is enough. Okay, because I nominated you, so I worked Aww. hard. Thank you. We Thanks. nominated you, you too, and I'm annoyed that Aww. you didn't get it. It might be an episode count thing. Jess was telling us that oh, yeah. they air towards uh, podcasts that have a little bit like more under the belt. Right. Yeah. We're still babies over at the debrief. Uh, yeah. I mean, what are you at? 30? It's just uh, a little uh-huh. over 30. Yeah. But look out. Yeah. I was trying to remember the last one that we downloaded on my podcatcher. We're still in our first, first year. First year. Last Christmas. First, first Christmas. Christmas I gave you my heart. Just watch. Yeah. Next That's Christmas. We'll I come mean, for you. We are <laughs> going to win. So you're coming for someone else. Don't take our nomination. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want. I won't. I'll... I'll always nominate you so we can have the podcast showdown. That would we be will fun. do the same. We nominated yeah. Rook. We I nominated uh-huh. who else did I nominate? A lot of people. Um, our pals over at Good Enough Gaming yeah. Podcast. They're great. They're funny. Uh, I haven't funny, listened to that one. Funny guys. Have you ever thought about listening to four dad <laughs> types talk about gaming? <laughs> Does that thrill and excite you? That's their tagline. <laughs> I just, I'm I'm imagining that. I'm imagining this, the conversations, and I'm already loving it, so I may just have to listen. It's just four of me talking to each other. So when Kyle met Ben, I don't know if sparks can fly through the internet, but... Yeah, there was synergy. Like a mirror has been held, like, oh... It was it was more like a oh like game recognized yeah. game like they, this is like this person's got their dad down yeah yeah like it's it's always just meant to be people yeah. like us were probably dads the dad jokes we were there dads, I'm sure you know like oh Star Trek yeah we just have to grow into it yeah do we have <laughs> any more Star Trek no let's um, go I don't want to I don't want to use up all our time with useless banter and fun uh, conversation yeah so this one actually is like. A, a little more Christmassy. It's just for like a moment, but it's episode um, season two, episode eighteen of Voyager called Death Wish, what? Huh. where Voyager itself actually does get turned into a Christmas ornament by one of the Qs. Oh my god, I forgot about that moment. Yeah, so a member of the Q continuum comes aboard Voyager, but not John to asylum, what? so he can commit suicide. No, it's the other one. John Delancey comes later. Mm. Hugh arrives on board to stop him, leaving Captain Janeway to mediate a moral dilemma. Huh. Oh. So it's just two Qs having a power trip, and at one point the Voyager gets turned into an ornament. That's amazing. Which is the exact ornament you can buy from Hallmark. Full circle. I'm not, I get zero money from Hallmark, let me just say. <laughs> we should get a sponsorship <laughs> from Hallmark. Their ornaments, yeah. We'll do a Star Trek Christmas episode every year if you give us money, Hallmark. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll pitch whatever ornament you have Absolutely. We'll just work coming. it in organically. Yeah. This episode reminds me of this new decoration from uh, Hallmark. Oh my uh, God, look which at Which has them. some very strong Christmas stuff. Yeah, right. Every every year they do something unhinged for Star Trek. I feel like they didn't just stick with the ships. Sorry, I'm deviating now completely no, because go. I love yeah. talking about this because it's so nuts. I think you nailed what was Christmassy about Death yeah. Wish, and that was that they are literally turned into a Christmas decoration, which is a great exactly. bit of meta self referentialness to like TNG ish mm-hmm. Christmas decorations. Yeah, and so stuff. like what they love to do is they love to take moments from Star Trek and turn them into mm-hmm. Christmas ornaments. Like I mentioned the the Spock and and Kirk thing. Um, one of my other personal favorites that I do not own, hint, hint, is... <laughs> <laughs> Google. Wait, let me get ready to Google. It's, 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 it's Kirk with the salt monster from A Man Trap. I love it. Choking him while he sits on the captain's chair. Oh my God, this is such a fucking good decoration. I know. I'm going down a rabbit hole here. Did you know you can get a Star Trek ornament of Data holding Spot? Yes. What? I thought that was just jokes. I love it. Nope, it's real. You can get one where <gasps> Oh my god, you can get one where it's from generations where Scotty is meeting Picard. Oh. Or there's one where Pike is in his little chair and he does the beeping thing. Oh, well, that's just a light. Oh, there's a there's the transporter snow globe with light. Oh my god. Yes, that's that ins- is just cute as the dick is. That's insensitive. <laughs> Oh, and Sulu is shirtless, and he's shirtless. It's just like, 
Hallmark no just nailing way. it. Or Sulu is uh, trying to stab uh, Kirk when they all get like space drunk. Good job, Hallmark. Yep. Like, yeah. I thought this was yeah. like jokes, but this is real. This is real, y'all. <gasps> oh my God. You can get a cue little stuffy and if you want to go like a little crazier you can just buy a bunch of tribbles and use them to decorate your tree i'm not paying attention to anything else now then you have fluffy balls yeah oh my god you can get a replicator mug see it's just all these unhinged decorations and a lot of them do come with audio bits well, this like is little batteries great. so you can press a button and it plays like either audio or sound effects so you're not just getting a scene you're getting voice clips from the show Oh, they would make great baubles. They would make great baubles. Yeah. You know what? Over the course of this <laughs> recording, I've really come around on uh, Star Trek Christmas trees. The mug changes color when you put hot beverages in it. <laughs> the hand of Apollo grabbing the Enterprise. Uh, there's also one of a Gorn uh, stabbing Kirk. As soon as I saw yeah. that ornament, I was like, spot? This is real? Yeah. Uh, Christmas tree topper is just the Enterprise. Amazing. Oh, amazing. I have one where it's uh, from from the Kelvin timeline where it's um, Nimoy Spock and Quinto Spock meeting and they have their oh. little conversation and it's just the two Spocks facing off. So. Well, here's oh, a like very that. sexy nice. mirror universe Uhura um, that could adorn your tree. <laughs> Uh, have you seen the Janeway one where she's just like leaning forward over no. ooh, over a railing? Intense. There's a lot yeah. of good ones. There's. Let me tell you, folks, if you're interested in Christmas and Star Trek <laughs> and Hallmark, don't back. there's a lot and Hallmark. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, there's the one where Kirk and during the Pon Far episode where Kirk and Spock are fighting and getting on. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, we digress. We have diverged to just looking at toys, and it's great. They're are not there any toys. More, they're ornaments. Toys. Um, they're, ornament. they're keepsakes, is what I would say, even more than yeah. an ornament. They are a heirloom that you could pass along to a uh, beloved person. Yeah. I do have to show you this really cool tricorder that I have. Oh, that's wicked. Oh. Is that it Bluetooth for your cell phone? <gasps> it does. So it makes all the noises, and it's cool. Bluetooth. So, yeah. I, I literally had a phone conversation with one of my friends who I also got as a gift one of these. So we just had a phone conversation with each other through Amazing. our tricorders. That's it. really cool. Yes. That's really cool. Um, so. We'll have to do it another time, but there's a, there's a whole cool conversation to be had about the way that sci-fi and Star Trek uh, specifically have influenced modern technology. Like Yes. Well, there's that documentary called uh, How Captain Kirk Changed the World or something, and it was mm-hmm. – mostly um, narrated and led by Kirk himself. But then we also have the likes of Jonathan Frakes that go on and talk about how, like, the tricorder was there and then how that influenced all these young professional people go to go out and actually come up with, like, different MRI technology for science. Like, you can't look at a data pad and not see an mm-hmm. iPad at this point. Oh, absolutely. And, like, you know, communicator, flip phone, like, it's it's all there. The only thing that I wish we would see more is when technology becomes inept Mm. and them having to like adjust. That's what I, and that's what I really liked about Deep Space Nine was that they're dealing with Cardassian technology so they can't get anything to work. Torak Nor is not made for the Federation. No. Oh, I got the name wrong. It's called How William Shatner Changed the World and I just popped it in the chat. Uh, Oh, that's Mm. less exciting. It's less exciting, but it's still, it's a great documentary. Highly recommend it. It was on the Discovery Channel back when Discovery was actually kind of more like TLC in that it had learning te- television shows. Yeah. T-Bone, Left Eye, and Chili Pepper. <laughs> As you do. Cheese, a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. No, is that not what you think of when you hear TLC? Nope. It is now. No, no scrubs? Oh, that's great. You know, another passenger side of your best friend's ride. Try trying to holler at, at me. me. Anyways. Oh, Left Eye. I think this is an appropriate place to end because Left Eye is another one of my crushes. Oh. <laughs> She was wonderful. We start with Maria from Sesame Street. We can end here with Left Eye of TLC. Uh, my media crushes. I love it. But I haven't heard who your Star Trek crush is. Ooh. Just to oh, like stay boy, on that's theme. that's tricky. I mean, who wasn't a Star Trek crush? Yeah, right? LeVar Burton. Amazing. Um, still a, like, LeVar Burton, the human, is still a crush. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who was my first... 
I didn't, I don't, I think it was Crusher. I don't think really? I was into Deanna Troy. And the first Star Trek I watched was TNG as like a kid. So it would have been Dr. Crusher. Possibly Tasha Yar. I mean, I was going to say like Tasha Yar has to be up there. Until she got yeah. skin of evil. I know. Oh. Spoiler for a 40-year-old show. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to this, just you're going to get spoiled. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You should have watched it. I've been spoiled for everything. Legend of Zelda, all of it. All right, now that I had to do it, let's end this off with uh, your your first Star Trek crushes, if you can remember them. Lexi, is it still Riker? Is it always Riker? No, Riker is more the dad figure. LeVar Burton, a.k.a. I mean, Jordy, dad was crush, the... What's... No, not a dad crush. I'm going mm. with LeVar okay. Burton as the, okay. as the crush. Do you have a first TNG crush, or is it a different series for you, Stephanie? Uh, it's the entire cast of the original series. That is a... It would, like, change weekly based on the episode I was watching, who I was crushing oh, okay. on. okay. I thought you meant it once, and I was going to say, no, <laughs> that's Christmas. That's Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, Whoa. the nativity scene in my heart. You know, just everyone together. <laughs> Why does this sound terrible? <laughs> Wow. Are you baby Jesus? <laughs> this is baby Jesus surrounded by the all the characters. <laughs> Our cast. Just giving me gifts. <laughs> this is this just keeps getting worse. I'm gonna commission that, I think, as an art piece. Me as baby Jesus and the original series characters surrounding surrounded me. By, oh my god, it's go. amazing. Oh yeah. No, this will be Christmas cards for ah, the next that year. That would be fantastic. Well, Stephanie Girk, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us to talk Star Trek and Christmas. We have really come a long way in proving that the real meaning of Christmas yeah. is post scarcity <laughs> economics. Uh or something like that. I don't know. Uh, where can people find you? The Debrief Weekly? The Debrief Weekly Report. And then you can find me on social media, whatever is whatever platform you're using. I'm probably on there at Steph Girk. Wicked. Other than that, you'll find me on this podcast talking <laughs> yeah, Star Trek. Now a regular occurrence. And uh, for us, we just joined Tumblr again. Um, <laughs> Tumblr's back, baby. <laughs> just thought we'd let people know. We <laughs> yeah. also, I got a shout out, we started a Patreon um, at the behest of our producer, yep. Jess. Uh, she's been suggesting it for a while, so we did that. We have one patron so far. Uh, it's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Fiona has found a new and creative way to give me money, uh, <laughs> for this podcast. Um, but yeah, if you enjoy the show at all and you feel like you got a couple extra bucks kicking around to help us cover some production costs, um, buy shirts for our guests, that sort of thing. Think about checking out uh, Patreon. We are sort of feeling that out and figuring out what our like, you know, rewards and stuff are going to be. But for now it's going to be, uh, a couple of uh, lost episodes that we had to dump um, for audio quality reasons and access to our special Discord where we will talk to you. Feel free to ask uh, any real-life personal questions you feel like there in the very exclusive uh, dork-only paid subscriber patron feed. It was very good. You did a good I'm job. Old, not great at the internet anymore, but I'm trying. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Uh, check us out there. Um, and then hopefully by the time we do another episode, we've won an award, oh, um, but if not yeah. happy to be nominated. So thank you to the Canadian podcast awards for that. And until next time, folks, uh, dork, 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 dork. <laughs> Gotta do the whistle. I can't do the bosun whistle. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> no, I can't do it. <laughs> Nobody can. <laughs> Thanks again, and we'll see you later. Live long and prosper. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Dork Matters. If you like the podcast, subscribe, give us a rating, and tell your friends about us. If you are a fellow dork and have a dork issue that you think we need to discuss, tell us on our social media. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter. You can also check out original art and other content from Ben and myself. We'd like to say a big thank you to Yabra for the use of our theme song, Dance, off of their Astral EP, as well as a thank you to Jess Schmidt for producing and editing our podcast. Thanks, Jess. Dork Matters. This podcast is created on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Nations, which includes the Siksika, the Begaini, and the Gaina. We also acknowledge the Stony Nakoda Nation, Sutena, and Métis Nation Region 3.